Hello everyone, it's me, Mr. Nomad Ben. I am reporting at Cleveland, Tennessee, but more specifically, I'm on the border between Cleveland, Tennessee and Cohada, Georgia. I'm basically at two places at once. But this particular location is very important in American history. And why it's so important, because this particular area is one of the many places in the east part of the United States that started the Trail of Tears. And that's the time when Andrew Jackson was our president in, during the 1820s, asking the Native Americans to head out west. So, today, I am at Red Clay State Historical Park. So, why don't we learn, educate, and look around what's around us. And here we go. Well, here is the trails that we can take today. Here's our options. This is where we're currently at, right here. I think we're going to make our way this direction. Either make our way around this area. If we have time, maybe we'll do the Blue Hole Nature Trail. But we shall see. We've got a good amount of options to do if you ever come to Ray Clay State Historical Park in Cleveland, Tennessee. As I'm about to start my little walk, the visitor center has got some stained glass paintings, kind of like a church, out of their visitor center. If anybody could get a good shot of this, or a good look, because get the reflection of the tree on it. Just be sure to please clean up after your dog. Picnicking in designated areas only. It's very important to picnic in designated places only because in Tennessee, there are plenty of bears. And don't forget about the one that's actually smarter than the average bear. Yay! Look at this beautiful open field. You can see the morning mist come out of the sides of the mountains and the trees in this forest. Let's take a closer look at this little historical house over here. Let's go see if anyone's home. Hello? Anybody home? Let me in! Well, I guess nobody's home. But check out what's the interior of this place, though. We got a fireplace. A mantle up here. I want to get to the other side so we get a better angle of the other side of the house. 
Look at how they kind of left it. It's actually pretty cool. Got a little candle lamps right here. Wicker baskets. And everyone knew in Tennessee they loved their whiskey. So you got yourself a whiskey jug over there. Well, it's been nearly 200 years, and they still didn't clean up their mess. I kind of wish we could find out how we can go upstairs. But even if we can't get in, I still think this is pretty cool. Well, I guess this is the best angle of the stairs I can get at this place. What we got over here? Well, this is a much better angle in the house than here. Looks like we've got a bed over here. And I guess this would be the the newly parents bed over here. Because at the foot of the bed, there's a little bassinet crib thingy right here. I know the feeling. I'm a father myself. Of a three month year old. It's got a much better angle on this part of the house. So I guess when you wanted to have a little free time, this would be the backyard of this particular house. Looks like you got yourself a little communal gathering and a fire pit area. Place to do your business, got yourself an outhouse. Then go ahead and grab yourself a horse in this little barn. And this will be the barn. This is going to put their livestock like horses, maybe a cattle or two. Maybe a pig to make some bacon. There's a little feeding trough right here. You know, I kind of wish I brought some marshmallows and some graham crackers and some Hershey chocolate bars with me. So I could make myself with some more right over there but this is the best I can do You know, I didn't realize that early settlers specialized in one thing in this particular area. Looks like we got ourselves some sunflowers and some corn growing all over here. So, I guess considering it's baseball season, sunflower seeds and popcorn. So this entire area where I filmed, here is actually the complete history of that little spot right here. The Cherokee Farmstead. Well, it looks like we got a few more huts out this direction. So let's go check this stuff out over here. So all three of these huts, the real names of this, is actually called the Sleeping Huts. So 
here's a close-up shot of what one of these huts over here looks like. Let's go take a look inside. Now imagine people living in here compared to what people are living in over there. That's a palace compared to a place like this. As I'm walking, kind of thought this was another picnic area or kind of a relaxation area that's here at the state park. But in reality, this little building was actually called the Ray Clay Council. I normally would say pause and read, but I want to do the best I can to read this to you guys about this particular building. Between 1828 and 1830, Georgia passed laws prohibiting the Cherokee from meeting from any purpose other than the sign a treaty giving up their land. The council that had been meeting in the Cherokee capital of New Ectota, Georgia, met once in Alabama in 1831, and then moved here to Red Clay in 1832. The council met here until just before the removal in 1838. Three archaeological investigations between 1973 and 1976 failed to determine the exact location of the council house. The reconstruction is based on the only eyewitness reports of the structure from the time period of the council of the 1830s. This description identified the council house as a simple parallelogram formed of logs with open sides, with benches for the councillors. More recent investigations suggest that the structure may have been much larger than this replica, possibly having an opening on the roof to allow smoke from the council for the fire to escape. Benches like those here would have been lined to the per perimeter to allow for seating of the delegates from each of the eight districts. So this is where they go and gather. Looks like this is the spring that we found on our hiking map. Let's take a closer look at this. This is called the Blue Hole Spring, believed to have been the source of water for the council of 1832 and 1837. This is a natural body of water right here that's coming out of the mountains.
if anyone could see in my camera, there's a natural blue hue that's inside the spring. And those little ripples is actually coming out of the ground. So that building right over here, if you see in the camera, that's where the councils met, where I sat down for a moment. And they said that this was believed to have served the councils. And here's a more of a stream this way. What I was about to do at that stream, I was going to put my Nashville Predators hat in that water and get cooled off. It's pretty humid down here in the south. A little water would have hurt, but there was a couple of young moms with their kids out here and, you know, they were telling them how to behave and all that. So if they saw an almost 30-year-old man act like a child by himself... I didn't want to be a bad example, so who knows, maybe another time when I'm by myself and no one's looking, I'll do it, but sometimes you just got to set the example, even when you're a complete stranger. Looks like they have ourselves a little small amphitheater right here where the settlers would perform plays or some music. Kind of makes me wonder what they were performing here all those years ago. To be or not to be, that is the question. Now what do we have here? Looks like some kind of altar. It's a fire. Oh, I can feel the heat from over here. Internal flame of the Cherokee Nation. This fire is a memorial to those people who suffered and died on the infamous Trail of Tears. It also commemorates the returning of the Eastern and Western Cherokee Nations here at Red Clay. Well, that concludes today's journey here at Red Clay State Park in Cleveland, Tennessee. Now, if you're interested in any more of my journeys, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and you can also follow me on Instagram as well. And to uh, kind of correct myself from earlier, it was actually in the 1830s Andrew Jackson had his presidency, and during all these events of the Trail of Tears was happening in the 1830s. However, I was correct that I said that it was in the 1820s, but Andrew Jackson got elected president in 1829. So technically I was right, but at the same time, there was a lot of false information it kind of backing me up a little bit with what I said earlier. So really all this stuff was really happening in the 1830s. And Andrew Jackson's presidency started technically in the 1820s, but it was 1829. So really everything just kind of happened in the very last part of the 20s decade entering the 30s decade. So if I offended or made some uh, history buffs a little irritated, I am so sorry for the misinformation, and I will do better next time on um, backing up with my uh, historical knowledge, because sometimes we, make, we all make mistakes. But other than that, nobody's perfect. But I just wanted to uh, correct that. But like I said, folks, don't forget to subscribe, and also give this video a thumbs up if you like this particular video, and it showed that you cared enough about this journey and that you enjoyed yourself in this video. Well, until next time, my YouTube viewers, have a wonderful week, and I'll see you guys in the next video. Sayonara. As I'm about to leave, the State Park Ranger is setting up some uh, program show going on. And what is this? Uh, you said Cherokee, weapon, Cherokee? Yeah. Cherokee weaponry and games. All right. And that sounds like a fun one to watch. <laughs> But another time. Check it out. I'm in Georgia. And my camera is in Tennessee.
And now my camera's in Georgia, and I'm standing in Tennessee. And now I'm at two places at once. My right side's Georgia, my left side's Tennessee. Now I'm in Tennessee. Now I'm in Georgia. And now I'm on the border. Georgia, border, Tennessee, Tennessee, border, Georgia. I'm at two places at once. How exciting.